I recently did a tutorial uh, which which showed the uh, the use of a 2D tracked patch method to remove uh, markers from this green screen. Um, this tutorial is a follow-on from that, so if you haven't already seen that, I really urge you to watch that first, mainly because I'm going to be reusing part of the workflow and some of the nodes. Um, for those of you that feel like you can carry on, I will just jump across to the uh, to where I created that 2D track patch, um, and I'm just going to copy uh, copy across this entire uh, branch from the from from the node tree, and just place it here for now. And I'll just uh, uh, no, I won't. Uh, I won't. I won't look it up. But anyway, this um, this basically is the uh, is the node configuration that I use to do the uh, the two D uh, tracked patch. So uh, maybe I will just just break into it a little bit and just show this. So um, so there was a uh, there was a roto uh, which I I can't I can't show without uh, without doing turning on this color grade. So I basically track this little area next to the um, right. Turn that, turn that colour. So this is trouble working in these really tight uh, screen areas. You see this little blue tracker. This is the one that I tracked. I'm going to track exactly the same one again. You can see that as it, as it comes past, it goes behind. There's just a little bit of animation on the. Um, on the, on the roto spline there you can see there's that comes across it just it just bends a little bit there as it comes through and bends a little bit as it goes out and the opacity is turned off uh, so that we don't see it when it's behind his head that's basically the premise of it that was fairly simple I just used a simple 2d tracker to track it through and I used the same 2d tracker but flipped over to stabilize in order to just pin it in place for quality control just so that you can see it a little bit more clearly when you're checking it for accuracy uh, that's it with the color correction turned off so that you can actually see it going through um, and I find that really useful for actually looking for any anomalies any little bits of the marker showing through any um, any weird color changes or anything like that any changes in grain anything like that that's what I'm looking for anyway that was the uh, that was a quick summary of the 2d tracking approach I'm just going to uh, leave that aside for now and just come back to this so this time I'm going to be using a 3d camera solve I'm not actually going to be doing the 3d track um, I'm going to be bringing in the track the track was actually done using a supervised workflow in synthize um, the benefits of uh, using a 3D camera solve as opposed to a, a 2D is basically because any patches that we apply to uh, in in, uh, in are in 3D space. So eff effectively, they're layered based on their proximity to camera rather than any typical stacking order generated when using mergers. And I think therefore then there's much more potential for them to be more accurate. And certainly, there's a, there's potential for greater degree of flexibility when building up a number of um, of patches. Okay, so I'm going to bring in my uh, my my tracks. So I'm just going to open uh, this supervised track. It's going to open a new node, which is which which a new uh, script, which almost certainly isn't going to open inside the the viewport. So I'll just have to squeeze it back into place. And um, and here is the here's the here's the track that uh, that Synthize generated. As I said, this was done using a supervised method, and then um, and then outputted for Nuke. So I'll just take those nodes there and copy them. And then come back to my script and paste. I'm going to be struggling a little bit in this capture area because it's very, very tight, but um, we should still be able to get by. I hope you can see it's brought another copy of the plate in, which I don't need. I can dispense with that and instead um, hook it up to the plate that I've got. It's only connecting up via the background port of the scanline renderer. So I just want to kind of get this into some kind of uh, space 
there's an, don't want to be uh, don't want to be able to zoom out too much so you can't see what the nodes are in here. Okay, so let's take a look at this at this track. We can see that there's some little pink things in here. These are actually the tracking markers that were generated inside Synthize. And if I come out a little bit more, you'll see that there's the there's the camera. So, and if I scrub the timeline, you'll see there's the camera move from from the shot. And these are track trackers uh, from the from the scene, either the mar either on the background or some of the uh, some of the production furniture that was in the foreground in order to for the camera to be able to or should I say for the software to be a to establish the parallax and solve this particular uh, solve this particular shot. So what can I tell you about this track? Uh, first of all, Nuke. Uh, sorry, Synthize. When it when when you bring a track in from Synthize, what it uh, effectively does is it puts all these trackers that we can see as pink elements. If I just open that up there, you can see that I have got a I've got a little controller so I can increase the size of those. I think that's useful now just so that to make it easier for them us to see them in this small capture space. Um, what it effectively does is it is it creates these all as 2D trackers and then groups them. So what we're seeing here is actually a group with a uh, uh, with a little bit of an interface applied with just one control for us to be able to scale up or scale down. But if we actually come into this uh, and take a look, this is what it actually looks like. So effectively, every one of those little pink dots is an individual tracking marker, just an ordinary nuke tracker. You can see if I click it, it's exactly the same. It's just an ordinary nuke tracker. And you can see that as I click through different ones, you'll see that each one of those is referencing a different uh, a different place and the one that we're interested in is is number 22 so just bear that bear that in mind if I double click that and then come back to the node graph and we just jump back into 2d view we can see that that's the marker that we're looking to uh, look into effect okay so I'm going to be projecting my patch onto a piece of 3d geometry which in this particular case is going to be a card node which is like a plane uh, so I need to actually do that inside here. Um, so if I jump jump back into 3D view, uh, just pull out so we can just tilt a little bit so we can see world space zero. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to come into here and add a card from the geometry section. And hopefully you can just see that. I might have to zoom in a little bit to see it. There's a card being created down there, a little plane object. If I actually scale it up, and I'm going to need to scale it up anyway, you can see it a little bit more clearly. Okay, so we've got our our track here 22, um, which exists in a particular 3D space. I could get hold of my card now and start to drag it and put it into position, but there's a better way of doing it than that. The way that I like to do this is to basically just copy and paste the coordinates. So again, just go back to my card. This this is my uh, this is my object so if I select that here's tracker 22 and we can see that we've got translate options so if I right click on that I can come down to copy and say I know this is off off your screen capture area but I can say copy values that's basically copied these 3d coordinates into the um, in, into the uh, into the uh, workspace sorry into the uh, memory of the computer um, so now I can open up my card and right click on the same element, come down to paste and say paste at absolute. Again it's off it's off screen. So paste absolute. And what that does essentially now is it takes my card and dumps it right its axis center right on the axis center of that card. So it's really, really perfectly positioned. Okay, so now I'm just going to cut that, come back to my node graph and paste it. Now I can connect that up to my scene and there it exists within my scene. I just put a checkerboard here so I could temporarily just put a, put a, a texture on it. Um, and now you can see if I just run that through now, we're, we're watching this scene now through the, through the scanline renderer. And you can see that that card is moving perfectly with the 3D camera track. So the idea behind this now is that I'm basically going to project my patch straight onto this card. So to do that, I'll be using a projection approach to this, and this starts with this little fella here, which is a shader, um, and it's essentially called the Project 3D node. And what the Project 3D node allows me to do is it basically allows me to to apply uh, textures 
two bits of 3D geometry using, um, using a projection camera. So this is going to go, the output from the shader goes into the 3D geometry, which in my case is the card, and then the texture, which I think the, I think the checkerboard served its purpose. I think what I'll do is I'll get all this and pull it down now, and I'm because I'm going to get my patch. So this is my stuff from earlier on. I don't need that 2D track anymore. I will keep the th the stabilized track because that will be useful in um, that'll be useful for, for checking it later on and I don't need the merge node so it's just these these are what have been used to generate the patch so I'll just hook those up to the uh, just hook those up to the main main plate and now I'm going to project I'm going to use that and now that is that the material there that's been generated by this patch um, is now being, is now ready to be projected onto the card. The only thing that I need to do now is I need a camera to project that. Again, if you if you refer to the previous tutorial, you will be aware that I I created the patch on frame 60, and you, there's a clue to that there because I've held the um, I've held the scene on frame 60 so that my roto paint actually was actually taken from that place. So I need to basically get a camera that represents. The, that represents that precise position in frame 60. So while I'm on frame 60, I'm going to make a copy of this camera, paste it over here. I'll just rename it uh, Projection Cam, um, and I'll recolor the node so it is distinctive from the uh, from the actual shot camera. And the other thing I need to do is I need to basically kill it so that it doesn't have any animation. This is the one. This is the moving camera. This is fine. Everything is going to come through and be seen through this through this moving camera. This is used purely and simply to project the texture onto the card. So this needs to be fixed in place on frame 60. There's two ways I can do that. I can do this. Uh, one way is to basically take that uh, take that frame hold, uh, make a copy of it, and dump it into there, and that will that will pin the uh, the projection camera on that particular frame. It won't it won't get beyond that. Um, or the other way is to go into the is to go into the projection camera attributes. Make sure that you're on the correct frame, and then right click and choose no animation on all knobs. And what that effectively does is that freezes the camera in time. So wherever the camera was on the frame that you did that, that is where the camera is now fixed. And because I did that on frame 60, then that is now uh, projecting from frame 60. So I can now lock that on. Um, I'll just disconnect from the, the background port now. And we should be able to see something. Uh, I don't need my tracking markers to be visible anymore. So let's take a look now. We can see we've got a we've got a tracking marker and we can see that that tracking marker is following that camera track really really well. Okay, we can even see the little blink there, which is the roto, uh, which is the little bit of rotoscoping that I did around the head. I may need to move that a little bit this time, but uh, but nevertheless, a final thing is to uh, is to merge this back over the background. So again, I'm just merging, putting merging the scanline renderer, and just dropping that uh, over onto the onto the the plate stream. Just branch that out. And now we can go in and take a look. Again, I've got my color correction, so I'm just going to turn that back on so we can see the. Uh, make it a little bit more vivid. So we can see our patch, and we should be able to test it now. So we can test it through like that. We can see it go in. We can see it disappearing behind the head because this uh, because this rotoscoping was done using the 2D track method. I would definitely need to check that. Uh, so I can see there, for example, that there's a slight discrepancy, which is um, almost certainly going to involve me doing a little bit of extra work. Um, just move that into position, and I'll probably have a similar problem out the other side. Okay now, so 
there it comes out the other side, there it goes through, there it comes out the other side, and there it goes through. And obviously the opacity is set to zero in these frames where it's behind the head. Okay, so let's turn off the color correction and hook up our um, our stabilized tracker to the merge and look at it through there. This obviously uh, stops the this this makes the footage move rather than the patch. So we basically see this from the patch's point of view. Uh, just to get that across, I'll just uh, turn the grade uh, temporarily back on, so that we can see that that uh, that stabilized area is, is is the bit that stays. And the, the advantage of that, of course, is I can get in nice and close, and uh, and I can I can I can assess that. So I turned the grade off at this stage now, and probably just scrub those offending frames between frame 40 and frame 50 looking for any weirdness and I can see that that looks okay alright so that is about it that is what's called a 3D patch method we've utilized the data from a 3D match move um, to apply our uh, to apply our patch rather than just doing it in a, in a 2D environment very flexible uh, very powerful potentially much more accurate um, and of course within this framework we can just be hooking up multiple uh, multiple cards all in different positions in 3D space and patching and, uh, and we can create a, um, a pretty robust solution uh, pretty quickly. Okay, I hope you found it useful. I hope that you'll find somewhere in your uh, projects where you can actually put this to, put this to the test.